Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Lincoln on this Sunday morning. My name is the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. We're joined today in this video by members of the staff of the Unitarian Church of Lincoln and our affiliate minister, who I will uh, introduce in just a moment. Our membership and admin coordinator, Kelly Ross, is hosting the call and coordinating technology this morning. Bob Fusen, Jean Helms, and Chelsea Krafka are here with support. Several of us are present in the chat room running beside this YouTube video on Sunday morning. We also have lay pastoral care folks on call this morning. And so if you need someone to talk to, reach out and we will get you in contact with one of them. It is my particular pleasure this morning to welcome our guest preacher this morning. I say guest preacher, but that's actually not quite accurate. Reverend Kimberly Debus is the Unitarian Church of Lincoln's affiliate community minister. And so while she is based in upstate New York, she is very much a part of this community. Kimberly's work covers worship, art, and music, and how we make meaning at the intersections of all three of those things. She and I were ministers together in Long Island, and it is such a pleasure to be able to continue to collaborate in this new way. So welcome, Kimberly. We're still practicing this new way of being together as a church. And while it is a time of anxiety, it is also a time of great possibility. We're learning a lot, very quickly, about how to be a church both together and apart. Much has changed in the last two months, but what has not changed is our congregation's vision. The Unitarian Church of Lincoln aspires to be a loving community uniting reason with spiritual exploration to transform ourselves and transform our world. That is a big vision. And we know that creating a loving community begins with welcome. So whether this is your first time here or your 500th, if you have stumbled onto this YouTube video by accident and are frantically Googling what is Unitarian Universalism in another window, or if you are a longtime member trying to figure out how to log on. If you came here hopeful or heartbroken, whatever your age, gender, skin color, whomever you love, you are welcome here with us. More than ever, it's important that we share this community, the warmth, the light, the love of this place. So our ask to you continues to be simple. Do not keep this place a hidden gem invite people to share what you have found here. We have this service on Sunday morning, Zoom, Vespers on Thursday night, interviews and daily updates on YouTube, meditation videos, stories from our religious education program, connection groups for members, talent shows, music, come join us, be a part of this thing that we are building. As we enter into worship together, take a moment wherever you are, to center yourself, find a comfortable place with your body, take a few deep breaths and let us begin. We open our worship service with these words from Gretchen Haley. Come into this place with all your confusion about how you will carry on, and also with hope. Come with your walls up, your furrowed brow, your fear, and your belief in something more. Let the silence call you back to yourself and the sound of your heart beating. Let the songs hold you and the words feel like a promise, a light of a new day breaking. There is no one here who does not know that lonely place that creeps in. No one's life that has skipped anger or loss or pain. There is no one here who does not know what it is to wonder why and what if and to want to be a part of making a life of meaning, making a difference, to live all the ways alive and awake with friends to lean on. We all need this remembering to breathe, this remembering what matters, this release of everything else, this time, this beauty, this beginning again. Come, let us worship together.
our opening hymn is number 128, For All That Is Our Life. Our first reading is a prayer by Lisa Bovey Kemper. In this religious community, this circle of care, we make space for the complexity of life, the myriad experiences that bless and break our hearts. The truth of human experience dictates that on any given day, we each come to the table with hearts in different places. It is especially so on this day, invented to honor women who nurture. And so in this circle of care, we honor that truth that mothering is not and never will be quantified in one single descriptor. Mothering can be elusive or infuriating, fulfilling or confusing, commonplace or triumphant. It exists in the everyday experiences of each person. There is no human being that is not connected to or disconnected from a mother. And so we honor the complexity of experience, writ large and flowered platitudes, but here, in the space laid bare, honoring the truth in each of our hearts. There is room for all in this circle. If you have carried a child or children, whether or not they came to be born, we see you. If you have fervently wished to do so and circumstances of fate made it impossible, we see you. If you love children we cannot see, whether because of death or estrangement, we see you. If you never wanted to be a mother, we see you. If you are happy to mother other people's children as an educator, an auntie, or a special friend, we see you. If your mother hurt you physically or emotionally, we see you. If you had no mother at all, we see you. If your mother is or was your best friend, we see you. If your gender says you are not a mother and yet you take on the role of nurturer, we see you. If you wonder whether your mothering has been enough, we see you. And if yours is a different truth altogether, we honor your unspoken story. 
there is room for all in this circle. Amen. So once upon a time, a time that seems so long ago, but wasn't really, a group of people in Lincoln, Nebraska got together once a week. As they pulled into the parking lot, they waved to those already there. As they joyfully got out of their cars and into the building, they were greeted with smiles and handshakes and hugs. Someone remembered another's birthday and handed them a card. Someone else gave out some small jars of sourdough starter they'd promised to share. Two others pulled out their phones to schedule a coffee date. Someone thanked another for the project they completed. A couple listened closely as someone shared hard news. More hugs, more handshakes, more smiles, more conversation until the signal that worship was about to begin and then those people sat together, sang together, listened together, and spent a radiant hour together. A simple ritual, the gathering together of worship, something we took for granted before the pandemic. Our show of affection and care was almost instinctive, is instinctive. We reach out to one another and as we learn more about each other, we know who welcomes hugs, who values a handshake, who would rather not touch but appreciates a conversation. We know who loves to give the things they've baked or grown and is those who are willing to accept them. We figure out who craves more connection than a too short and often interrupted coffee hour conversation. Such is the warmth of community we talk about in the familiar chalice, chalice extinguishing by Elizabeth Sella Jones, which is often shared in Unitarian Universalist congregations. She writes, we extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. These we carry in our hearts. Now we talk about the fire of commitment a lot. We are a people committed to justice and loving the hell out of this world after all. But we also carry in our hearts the warmth of community, this community, the warmth we show when we enter, the warmth that keeps us coming back week after week, keep us in covenant when things get hard, keeps us affirming and promoting our principles, the warmth of our care for one another. Now there are lots of ways to care for one another. Some of you are caring for children, raising them with love and infinite patience. Others are caring for elder, elderly family members, honoring their legacy and ensuring their health and their safety. Some are doing both, the sandwich generation. The care also shows up in our attention and concern, care to avoid damage or risk or loss, whether it be our cars or good china or our silk blouse or our checking accounts. Some of you are also professional carers, nurses, doctors, hospice workers, chaplains, therapists, police officers, firefighters, ministers, all working in caring professions to ensure physical, emotional, and spiritual health and safety. But we all have the capacity for care because we all have affection for one another. In his book, The Four Loves, author C.S. Lewis talks about affection, a characteristic of love that usually needs absence or bereavement to set us praising those to whom only affection binds us. He suggests that affection has a quiet nature, that we often take those for whom we feel affection for, for granted. Yet affection also opens our eyes to goodness we would not have seen or should not have appreciated without it. It is, Lewis affirms, responsible for nine-tenths of whatever solid and durable happiness there is in our natural lives. When we show affection for each other, we affirm each other's worth and dignity and interconnectedness. We show care for their bodies, their minds, and their sweet souls. And we are in a time of absence. Let's breathe.
We are in a time of absence. And we are in it in some way through technology and the wonders that are 2020 in this time of absence together. A couple times a week, we gather as a community and it looks different now. It doesn't have the same greeting as we come in from the parking lot, but it has its own rhythms to it, its own traditions. The music that begins YouTube live streams will haunt my memories of this time for the next 30 years. And also this thing that we've been doing during the, the second hymn every Sunday. As the song plays and, and you sing along wherever you are, or I attempt to sing along and the dog hides in the corner, we've taken to typing in names of folks that we are holding in our hearts this week in joy, in sorrow, in complicated feelings that we might not be able to put into words. So as, as this next song plays, type in the name, maybe it's your name, maybe it's someone you love, maybe it's someone you loved once, into the chat box on the left. We'll hold all the names and all the stories together as a community. Our next song is number 1002 in the Teal Hymnal, Comfort Me.
How shall we mend you, sweet soul? The poet and minister Nancy Schaefer writes, what shall we use? And how is it in the first place you've come to be torn? Come, sit, come tell me. We will find a way to mend you. I would offer you so much, sweet soul, this banana sliced in rounds of palest yellow atop hot cereal, or these raisins scattered through it if you'd rather would offer cellos in the background singing melodies Vivaldi heard and wrote for us to keep. Would hold out to you everything colored blue or lavender or light green. All of this I would offer you, sweet soul. All of it, or any piece of it, might mend you. I would offer you, sweet soul, this chair by the window the sunlight on the floor and the cat asleep in it. I would offer you my silence, my presence, all this love I have and my sorrow, you've become torn. How shall we mend you, sweet soul? With these, I think gently we can begin. We will mend you with a rocking chair, some raisins, a cat, a field of lavender beginning now to bloom. We will mend you with songs remembered entirely the first time ever that they are heard. We will mend you with pieces of your own sweet self, sweet soul, with what you've taught from the very beginning. Oh, you sweet souls. For some of you, the orders to stay home may seem like a little slice of heaven. Finally getting to clear your calendar and nest at home and just do your thing. Yet even for the most introverted among us, this isolation can be wearing. Especially for those who are not only working from home, but are also caring for and trying to educate children. It's been two months of virtual everything with no end in sight, and even the introverts are missing their weekly foray into the flurry that is Sunday morning. Dr. Kimberly Norris, an authority on confinement and reintegration at the University of Tasmania, says that we've moved from the first period of isolation, a time of panic buying and confusion, to the second period, the honeymoon, where it felt novel and different as we learned new technology and enjoyed working in pajamas. But now we're moving into the third period, a time of loneliness, a time of hollow-eyed stares, odd fixations, and brooding resentment. According to studies of how long humans can survive in space, moods drop about two-thirds of the way through a mission. And when there's unclarity about when a time of isolation will end, it is even harder. Because while there seem to be glimmers of hope, in our case a seemingly flattening curve, the promise of vaccines, the uncertainty of how long this will actually last means that this third period could last a long time. We need the warmth of community more than ever if we are to sustain our community through this long third period. We're missing the things that make our community warm, that make us warm. Yes, we are getting good messages for our minds, hearing good music and poetry that feed us, having amazing and deep conversations, but that's not all we go to church for. We miss the care and the shows of affection that the community that are meaningful to us. Now it's true that not every show of affection works for every person. In the early 1990s, Gary Chapman developed the five love languages, which identified the various ways that people want to receive expressions of love. These five are words of affection, 
quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Now, as I read those off, some of you thought, ah, that's the one that's me. And others thought, huh, I guess I'm a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And some of you weren't sure at all. But it's important to know how you want to receive affection and care because then you can share that information with those around you, your partners, family members, friends, fellow members of UCL. You already do some of it without realizing it. Those who love physical touch ask for hugs. Those who crave quality time make promises to set a date for coffee. Those who like gifts are the first in line for the sourdough starter or the freshly picked tomatoes. And it is hard right now, especially for the quality time and physical touch people. But even in this time of pandemic, when the closest we get is a wave as we walk past a friend's house or chat over the phone or FaceTime or Zoom, we can express affection. For those who appreciate words of affirmation, I invite you to call or text or send a letter with messages of appreciation and encouragement. Express gratitude for them and their role in your life. For those who appreciate quality time, make plans for virtual coffee dates, dinners, and watch parties. Make it special and focused on spending time with each other. For those who appreciate receiving gifts, now is a great time to send gifts through the mail or leave baskets of flowers or bread or starter plants or, yes, sourdough starter on their doorstep. For those who appreciate acts of service, inquire about ways to help out, maybe with a meal delivery <clears throat> or helping in the garden or repairing something, things that can be done safely and from a distance. For those who appreciate physical touch, you are my people. And this may be hardest on us. If you live with one of those who appreciate touch, do so. With consent, of course. But hold hands, touch a shoulder, hug. For those who don't live with anyone, offer them affirmations. Maybe help them create an in-home spa day. Invite them to snuggle with pillows or pets. Maybe send them a shawl or a blanket that they can wrap up in. It isn't easy. Showing affection at a distance, the old saw absence makes the heart grow fonder is real, especially for those, those of us who count on our weekly immersion in the warmth of community. And yes, we are showing care by staying home and doing our best to reduce the rate of infection. This is one of the most important ways to show care right now. But it's not all we need. Our bodies and our minds and our souls need care. Nancy Schaefer reminds us that care matters for our sweet souls, our souls in need of mending, in need of attention, in need of affection. We will mend you with pieces of your own sweet self, Nancy writes, with what you've taught from the very beginning. You know what you need. Ask, take care, show care. In these hard times, it's more important than ever to sustain the warmth of this community. We have just a few announcements as we move this service to a close. The first is that I, I continue to encourage everyone to stay home. Uh, if you saw the video update on Friday, I talked a little bit more about this. Um, but while the, the curve is starting to flatten nationwide, we here in Nebraska are seeing a significant increase in cases in the last two weeks. So please, please continue to take care of yourselves and each other by staying at home even though that's really hard right now. 
our next announcement um, is that next Sunday, May 17th at 11 o'clock, will be our spring congregational meeting. This will, out of necessity, be a different kind of congregational meeting than we have had in the past. Rather than meeting in our sanctuary, we will meet on Zoom. We imagine that we will have a lot of people on that call. Our congregational meetings are a chance to check in about the work of the congregation, to, to look at what has happened over the last year, to reaffirm our commitments to what is at the heart of our congregation, to choose new folks for our Share the Plate program, and to recognize new leaders on the board and the program council, and to thank our leaders departing. You should have, uh, if, you, if you don't already, uh, you'll have a link to that Zoom meeting in your e-blasts this week. Um, I've, uh, I've been asked to encourage you uh, to do your homework before the meeting starts, particularly with Share the Care nominations. Because we're meeting remotely, we're going to have to vote online, and, and that's going to have a time limit to it. So. What won't work is if you wait until the meeting to read all of the nominations that have been put in. So sometime this week, take some, take some time, 20 minutes, go to our website, uh, unitarianlincoln.org. It's under the governance tab on our website and read up on all the nominations, both for, for board members, program council chair, um, and share the care. Uh, if you're feeling like extra credit, uh, the annual reports from myself and the board presidents and the program council chair uh, and the religious education director and many other committees are also live on the website and I would love it if you, if you read them and come with questions to the meeting. Like a whole lot that we've done in the last couple months, this will be a new thing for all of us to meet and vote online at this magnitude. But if there is one thing that we have learned in the last two months of congregational life, it's that we can do complicated and new things and we can do them well. So I look forward to joining you uh, both at the service next Sunday and for that meeting. Lastly, as this last song plays, I invite you to consider giving to the congregation. When we're in our sanctuary, the ushers pass a plate and we say that this congregation benefits from gifts both seen and unseen, that all of us have reason to be thankful for the role that this congregation plays in our life. And even though we are not meeting in person, that remains true. And even though we do not have plates to pass from house to house in Lincoln, and even if we did, that would be a really bad idea right now, we still have ways to give. So please consider texting UC Lincoln and the amount you wish to give today to 73256, 73256. And we'll put this information uh, in, the, in the chat function of this call as well. Our last hymn is number 1015 in the Teal Hymnal. I know I can.
closing words come from Nancy Reed McKee. You may feel alone, yet you are integral, a part of this community, a part of our common fire. Your light carries through invisible microfilaments connecting you to me. Burn on, burn your chalice of light, of love, of deep connection until we are in each other's presence once again. Be at peace, beloveds, and amen.